Just a quick one today. This is uh, a fly called the Dr. Burke, or named for Dr. Burke, from Ray Bergman's Trout. Dr. Burke was uh, a serious angler and uh, preferred brown trout of all the varieties of trout, as do I. They're just a little more challenging. This is a... Um, Mustad 3399 number six hook, and I'm using um, Benecki 12 watt thread. The tail here is um, Peacock Sword. was used on several wet flies and I, I just love a wet fly with a peacock sword tail. This is medium oval tinsel that we'll use for the rib, just tying it in with one turn of thread just to kind of keep it in place. And then this is flat silver, medium tinsel, metal. Binding it down. I prepped that a little bit by uh, cutting, cutting the end at an angle. Just a little bit of less bulk. And these, uh, wrap this forward edge to edge and that's why we like to use white thread underneath it tends to show through it's less noticeable than if you use black just trap it a couple times and don't cut it off quite yet Don't cut it off until you've wrapped your rib and you know everything is hunky-dory. That way, if you want to backtrack, you always can. The tradition is five turns of ribbing, although on a, on a smaller wet fly, four is fine and on a larger wet fly, six or seven is fine. But five works well. Anywhere from size six hook to ten, I like I like five turns. And of course, everyone will tell you not to use your good scissors to cut metal tinsel. So you're asking yourself, well, Eric, why in the world are you doing that? Well, I buy a new pair every year anyway, and it's just a convenience. All wet fly hackle, well, I can't say all. Wet fly hackle typically is tied in by the tip, but not always. There were a lot of books, uh, old American books, that showed it tied in by the the butt. The tip works better, in, in my opinion. It's the way I like to do it, certainly. And I fold it back as I go rather than trying to fold it ahead of time. Just a little bit easier. This is Whiting American. It's been dyed yellow.
And gen generally, I like this the hackle to extend just about to the uh, point of the hook. This is a little short, but it's it's not it's not bad. I lost tension on the stem there. Don't do that. We'll make it work. As far as number of turns of hackle, four, sometimes five. You can go with fewer if you if you'd like. Um, I've tied a lot of flies with with just three turns, and and they worked fine. I've I've pretty much standardized on four turns. After a while, you kind of get a method of 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 doing a fly, and now here you notice at this point, um, I'm I'm switching to black thread and that was a traditional thing wet flies had black heads certainly most of the ones in trout did not all of them there are never any absolutes it's the one thing I know for sure Just cleaning up a couple things here. And uh, I've gone and, and, and cut a couple of wing slips. I'm holding them uh, concave sides together, tips up, tips to the rear, tips together. And I tie them this way because that's the way I remember flies being when I was a kid. Um, <clears throat> wet flies in particular. There are four ways of, of tying in wings. And uh, one of these days I'll, 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 do all, I'll do a fly with all four methods. This is the way I do the vast majority of my wet flies. My one thought when I mount a wet fly wing is to make sure that the far wing is straddling the hook is on the other side of the shank. I do towards the end of, of a wet fly, you'll, you'll see I do a lot of clockwise spinning of the bobbin to uh, tighten up the turns uh, make the, the thread stronger because I use a lot of force when I bind things down towards the, towards the end. These are uh, very small jungle cock nails that I've stripped out. Strips the stems. And the, the near one kind of, I like to have the near one curve down a little bit and the far one curve down a little bit, which means I take them from the opposite side of a jungle cock cape. If they're straight, that's fine too. But a lot of, a lot of uh, jungle cock or any feathers will, will have a natural curve to them. And you'll find if you go to the other side of the cape, it curve, they curve the other direction. So you just use one from each side. And leave the stems long so that you can adjust pull to length, etc., as I'm doing here. Got this held in place with, I think, three turns. And now I'm tightening up holding them in place with my left hand in a pinch. Just make sure they're where you want them before you 
before you wind back up. Again, I'm spinning the bobbin clockwise as if I'm screwing in a light bulb. Installing a bulb. That'll make the thread strong and you can really apply some pressure. There's a little piece of, I think it's part of the jungle cock nail sticking out. So I bent it down and I'm doing another whip finish here. Try to get coverage. And we'll cut this thread and uh, glue it up, glue everything up. I would have liked to have had a smaller head. I would have liked to have had somebody give me a million billion dollars today, but that didn't happen either. Have fun tying this one. It's it's a it's a pretty fly and a lot of fun to do.